In today's video, we'll discuss about bronchial asthma. So, uh, the definition of bronchial asthma is it is the disease of airways produced by hypersensitivity immune response hypersensitivity immune response of the tracheobronchial tree of the tracheobronchial tree to a wide variety of stimuli resulting in reversible narrowing of air passage so here the things that are important are that it is a hypersensitivity immune response of tracheobronchial tree to a wide variety of the main part is it is reversible it causes reversible narrowing of the air passage now it is an acute disease so it is an episodic disease with acute exacerbations with free symptom with symptom free periods then it is a short lived attack characterized by wheezes cough chest tightness and dyspnea now coming on to the etiology to understand the etiology we will uh, first understand that there are two types of asthma okay so coming on to the etiology now two types of asthma are there one is the atopic and the another one is non atopic now the atopic asthma is basically the asthma which has an early onset and non atopic is the one which has late onset so if it is uh, early it if, if it is having an early onset so it might be a childhood asthma it is episodic and has a sudden onset now if this one is happening after so this is adult asthma now since it is childhood asthma it can have family history history positive it is absent here also it can respond to the inflammatory uh, tests that is the skin tests for hypersensitivity are positive here they will be negative negative also uh, there is more wheeze and less productive cough whereas it is opposite in the non atopic where there is more of the uh, productive cough and less of wheeze productive cough and less of wheeze now uh, this occurs mainly due to some triggering factors now the triggering factors as we all know in asthma are many so uh, like pollens house dust fungal spores danders animal danders feathers insect webs in this there are no triggering factors also uh, one more point of difference is uh, the triggering factors then uh, yes it is precipitated at any time of day or night but it is precipitated mainly during the night or when the person uh, is uh, it is during night so nocturnal asthma also it is not induced during exercise now uh, coming on to the next it is seasonal because we have seen that it is caused due to the triggering factors also this is not seasonal then uh, we can use sodium chromoglycate which is effective in a topic and it is non effective in the uh, non a topic now uh, definition we are done with we are done with etiology now coming on to the pathophysiology now in pathophysiology what happens is to understand pathophysiology we will refer to the structure so uh, suppose these are the alveoli 
and this is our lumen okay then we have these smooth muscle cells okay so this is alveoli and this is relaxed smooth muscles now what will happen in asthma what we'll see is we will see something like tortuous dilated tracts constricted tracts okay now the muscles they will become tightened now this is the alveoli mucus is coming out there is narrowing of airway passage narrowing of airway passage these muscles are tightened air is trapped in an alveoli okay now coming on to the clinical features for clinical features uh, first of all divide them into three first one is episodic then is severe asthma or status asthmaticus and then is chronic now in the episodic what you will see is you will see wheezes dyspnea basically a topic wala allergens spontaneous also uh, duration hours weeks and days now in status asthmaticus what we see is there is no rest symptom free period okay so it is basically a continuous state so there is narrowing a complete narrowing so there is breathlessness during the day and the night breathlessness during day and night during day and night without any period of relief this is an important point here without any period of relief now coming on to the clinical uh, features now first of all uh, it has allergic manifestations because it is uh, an inflammatory disease so there is increased nasal secretion there might be nasal polyps eczema atopic dermatitis also tachypnea tachycardia cyanosis then the percussion note is resonant or hyper resonant percussion note resonant or hyper resonant then high pitched ronchi in case of severe uh, what we see is there is pigeon chest deformity this is important there is pigeon chest deformity now in chronic it is basically a triad of chest tightness wheeze and exertional dyspnea now it occurs during the night time now coming on to the uh, i explained the pathophysiology through a diagram but now i'll explain it through a flow chart as well you can add it in here so pathogenesis okay first of all we have a triggering event this is very easy to understand first of all we have a triggering event now there is an acute attack and a repeated attack okay now in acute attack what we will see first of all we will see that there will be an acute inflammatory response now acute inflammatory response is going to occur when the allergen plus immunoglobulins meet now mast cells they will release histamine prostaglandin leukotriene leukotrienes then cytokines growth factors now this will stimulate the h2 receptors on the bronchial mucosa bronchial stimulate bronchial mucosa now due to this there will be bronco constriction so there will be acute asthma in case of repeated attack what we will see is there is chronic asthma all right now in chronic asthma what we will see is there will be cellular activation cellular activation of the uh, cells like the epithelial cells the structural cells the smooth muscle cells the endothelial cells the nerve cells and fibroblast cells fibroblast and nerve cells okay now these will release mediators 
same way data is just mentioned and then the effects effects are important the effects will differ so to remember uh, the defect so first of all is bronchospasm then we have by p plasma exudation then mucus secretion airway edema structural changes now this is easy to understand the basic functioning that is happening behind the asthma now coming on to the investigation in investigation first of all in uh, blood sample uh, we will see that there will be eosinophilia we will discuss eosinophilia later then we will do the blood culture and we'll see what is why is it being co uh, caused then ige levels which was here it will be increased okay since it's inflammation so in chest x-ray what you will see is you will see a increased translucency there will be hyperinflation of lungs segmental collapse and pneumothorax after chest x-ray you can do pulmonary function tests now here there will be reduced FEV1 upon FEVC ratio okay and PEF will be less than 2 liter per minute then provocative test in provocative test what happens is you give histamine to the patient until there is a fall of 20 percent fall of 20 percent in the FEV1 or PEF okay we administer increasing concentrations of histamine till the fall is 20 percent in the patient now coming on to the another uh, it is a stress test now in stress test usually stress tests do not come uh, are not very confirmatory but we nowadays perform exercise stress test now in this what happens is we tell the patient to do a six minute walking or running on the treadmill running on treadmill then we uh, see what is the then we see that what is the heart rate and what is the oxygen level now if the heart rate is more than 160 per minute then it is positive now coming on to the another which is a uh, blood gas arterial blood gas analysis over here what you will see is there will be less of oxygen so hypoxemia and metabolic alkalosis now another is since i told you in our topic there will be skin hypersensitivity positive test so skin hypersensitivity test there is a characteristic wheel and flare appearance this is mainly seen in inflammation all right now coming on to the management so in management if you're asked about management first you will uh, talk about the conservative and then the medical treatment now coming on to the conservative treatment first of all we will identify the um, causative agent and we will remove it or avoid it avoidance then there is the treatment of comorbid conditions now comorbid conditions such as sinusitis hay fever grd the underlying systemic diseases basically obstructive sleep apnea obesity after this what we will do is we will uh, do desensitization why is uh, the bronchial asthma occurring it is occurring due to the antigen and antibody reaction so we will desensitize then we can use sodium chromoglycate now what we do is we uh, put this into a regular inhaler uh, we basically put 30 milligrams of powder into the regular inhaler and we give it to the children and they puff it uh, uh, by the spin inhaler but we can also give it through pressurized inhalers pressurized inhalers or dispensers so in dispensers what we do is we give two to four milligrams uh, four times a day and it prevents the recurrence now there is another drug which is called a skitophen it is not used these days uh, then there is pneumococcal pneumococcal and annual influenza vaccine and h1n1 vaccine is also given now coming on to the main which is the main treatment now this is very easy to remember if you go how i understand uh, how i make you understand sorry so uh, what is most important in bronchial asthma is the management so it's the stepwise management basically first is step one step then is symptoms then is the predicted 
पी ई एफ आर एंड देन इज द ट्रीटमेंट ओके नाउ रिमेंबर दैट देर आर सिक्स स्टेप्स ओके सो फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स नाउ दीज आर द फर्स्ट स्टेप्स नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द सिम्टम्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन इट इज ओकेजनल ओकेजनली प्रेजेंट एंड इट इज नॉट डेली ओकेजनल सिम्टम्स एंड नॉट प्रेजेंट डेली सेकेंड इज वेन इट इज प्रेजेंट डेली then third is moderate and persistent then fourth is uh, severe and persistent then fifth is very severe and persistent then the third one uh, sixth one is severe and there is deterioration in spite of giving in spite of giving prednisolone what is prednisolone it's an corticosteroid now the pefr now in this it will be uh, basically 100% in this it will be 80% in this it will be 50 to 80% this also 50 to 80% this will be less than 50% and less and this will be less than 30% now coming on to the treatment now if there are occasional so what we do is we give short acting beta agonist now short acting beta agonist like salbutamol or terbutaline in the dosage of To fifty to five hundred micrograms. Then, in case when it is present daily, then we give inhaled steroids like beclomethazone, dipropionate. Okay. Now this is given in the dosage of eight hundred microgram twice a day. Now, in case of this, we give in children we give sodium bromoglycate. Over here, we will give bronchodilators plus corticosteroids in dosage of three thousand microgram per day. Over here, in severe persistence, what you will do is you will give corticosteroid plus you will also uh, add on the long-acting beta agonist such as salmetrol. Now, in the dosage of fifty micrograms two times a day. Then, in very severe, what you do is you give all of them. Also, you give oral prednisolone. Which is given in the dosage of forty milligrams daily. Or there is one more, omalizumab. It is basically an antibody preparation. So in case when it is deteriorating, you need hospital administration. Now there are drugs which you can tell about, like mast cell stabilizers, Montalcast. Zafrocast. Also, you can talk about amalizumab again here. Then there are more which you can uh, refer, such as bronchodilators, antibiotics. These are anti-leukotrienes.